in that context. Uh, so this is a PFM Tax Africa presentation. But I'm sure most of the issues will be known to you, you know, as they are being debated. Um, okay, so uh, as is our tradition, we try to use, you know, um, official, you know, data uh, complemented by information authoritative ones that we can pick from others and are verifiable. So the theme of the budget is building sustainable entrepreneurial nation, fiscal consolidation and job creation. Obviously you would see our interest in fiscal consolidation, but for us, that is the most important thing. Now it is agreed that fiscal consolidation is needed. I would say solely needed. And it's a sentiment. These are the market sentiments. The external market, I said market. And in fact, the multilateral from IMF to World Bank at president level and at you know the director level in these institutions have been expressing some concern. So for us, the fiscal situation and the fiscal consolidation is important. It's not just because that is our business you know, for operating as PFM Tax Africa. But given what we all know, um, and to move ahead of myself, given the crowding out, you know, of the fiscal space by wages and compensation, if you are going to create jobs, yes, we all know that part of the reason for the wage increase is the attempt to use the public sector with the uh, uh, payroll, you know, to do massive, Function that is being contracted. There's uh, we envisage a contraction which has you know begun in that area. So that goes to the point that the most sustainable way of creating jobs is through capital expenditure, which is squeezed. So this is the fiscal context which you know we <clears throat> embark on this discussion in relation to the thing. If it's about job creation then we need to do some fiscal, serious fiscal realignment before you know, we can achieve this goal. After the presentation, towards the end rather, we will see whether we have you know, been moving in this direction. You remember that we used the middle term budget, in the, sorry, in the 2021 budget to do a similar projection. Um, and so we'll see whether we have been on that path. In that sense, what we are saying is that the fiscal situation is the main threat. Economic stability today, job creation, because as we said, it's crowding capital expenditure. Uh, it is limiting market access. You know, we know it. That um, and we see some of the figures. So let me not jump ahead of myself. And consequently, we are seeing a crowding out of private sector credit. You know, as government tends to domestic market. Financing. In other words, because government has not even been able to do the remainder of the bond, how are we financing the budget? And we know that no residents are also exiting domestic bonds. So it means that government is heavily in the domestic market. And, um, and if this trajectory continues in the 2022, which is why the situation has changed, then we are going to see you know, the private sector credit being crowded out by government in a very practical economic position which everybody knows. Now, it begs the question, what happened to the much trumpeted, you know, consolidation pre-COVID, you know, and with over 4.5 billion US dollars, and we're talking US dollars of inflows, either as loans or grants, as well from the IMF, <clears throat> the World Bank, and what we say, if you include, this is excluding SDR, then you would, I would think that if the problem is COVID, then we have had enough sufficient. The major impact would have been concessional financing from the IMF impacting debt, which if it had gone, you know, for balance of payment support as is a tradition, and therefore would have been the responsibility of Bank of Ghana, then we shouldn't be seeing much impact, you know, on the fiscal. But, we are here where even the government numbers is telling us the fiscal 
will come down from the government official position of 11 percent, you know, which uh, some institutions have put at 13 to 15 percent to a mere nine percent or so. And we'll show that 8.5, 7.5, whichever number, you know, you pick. So the post-COVID situation seems to be a problem and it seems to take the question whether all our problems, <clears throat> you know, has been, you know, at, can be attributed to COVID, uh, given these two factors which are pointed. Do we spot a consolidation? Wait to the end, but we use, as I said, official data to try and answer this question. The second question we have is, do we see a program of adjustment, which is very important? It doesn't matter whether it's, it's uh, being forced in quotes on us. We should, given our current situation, have our own program or plan for getting out of the woods. Do we see it? The numbers will speak, you know, for um, themselves or for itself, the fiscal uh, framework and the numbers. So what are the summary of the challenges facing the economy from a fiscal perspective? You know, which impacts the real sector. We want to be very focused, so we don't want to be all over the place. But during question time, please, you are free uh, to, uh, to ask questions, you know, on other aspects of the, uh, of the budget. The first is we see total and tax revenue. That's total revenue and tax revenue stagnant. Uh, total revenue at 16.7%. And then we see the average of tax revenue at 12 to 13% uh, of GDP, even with a boost of three oil fields to additional, which has increased output from 70,000 to nearly 200,000 barrels per day, and with prices um, rebounding uh, before they went down with COVID. Um, <clears throat> we see this situation as a result of distorted tax handles, some of which are being reversed, we'll look at them. Um, and ad hoc tax policy measures. For example, the removal of the debt fund, the NHI to split levies, you know, is increasing the cost of production and therefore likely tax evasion and products um, is taking place. We have other, other ones uh, and we can discuss them in more detail. Expenditure is significantly, significantly high and it's revenue. We all know that total revenue. We just alluded to that. And this is one of the major headaches where compensation and interest is not enough. You know, compensation revenue, total revenue is not enough to meet compensation and interest payments only. And why is this a worry? It means two items out of the budget are taking all of total revenue. And I often remind my audience that when we talk about total revenue, because our budget Heavily earmarked. We are talking gross, not net. We are talking about total revenue before debt fund, before NHIL, before DACF, before you know the IGFs, you know, and others which are suffering from the cap uh, are deducted. Before oil, PRMA, you know, oil funds are deducted. So you can see that the situation is there, and usually it is there when you go beyond tax, you know, revenue. Now we are talking total revenue, uh, including all these, you know, uh, facts. So I think this should be the context, but this was the context in which the budget was prepared. And this is the context which we want to get out. But the numbers will also tell us, you know, whether, yeah. Now, given the situation from these two, the obvious is high budget, wedding debt. And we have a debt situation where already we are borrowing to pay principal. And there isn't enough money to pay interest together with compensation. All these are dependent on borrowing together with the recurrent expenditure and capital expenditure, which is the one which should have been borrowing to finance. So uh, you see that the whole thing is sitting directly. It's what is happening you know, to that to the debt situation to the point where it used to be a debate over whether our debt was sustainable or not. 
whether we had reached the point of uh, debt distress, but uh, uh, now the debate is squarely whether we are uh, in the HIPIC range. And let me say that when we use HIPIC, it only means that you are heavily indebted, a heavily indebted poor nation. Maybe we are million income, but you can, if you like, you can substitute as heavily indebted, you know, a middle income country, which means that you are not going to get the consequences. There's no, you know, debt forgiveness. And the World Bank president had, you know, said only recently that uh, Ghana could go for the debt suspension under the IMF and the World Bank. And that would require a program not necessarily an IMF program, but if you are going for it and if they are leading the effort as they are doing for other countries uh, post-COVID, then you would have to show, you know, in a credible way, you know, that because they are, that you, are, you, you can get out of the woods, you can manage expenditure, you can raise revenues. Uh, so this is why we are saying that wherever you look, it is becoming clear to us that it's not enough to say that we're not going to do a program determined by outsiders. This stance is not new. Remember that we are also here at this point. Let me move away from PFM tax and, and mention my involvement in government that we had attempted to do a homegrown policy, but the single spine, doom so and others, you know, pushed us after you know the development partners thought that you know we we needed you know to go to the fund. So when I make this point, it is not as though one is pontificating. No, this is the situation that faces. The situation now is worse than when that situation faced us, 2013. <clears throat> so you see from what I've said, I just want to summarize the steps that I started with revenue and expenditure and a cash basis, which is the first component of our fiscal framework. We did. We did a free program, you know, um, I would have expected more people. Uh, so we'll be repeating these programs. This will be part of our academy. Because I think particularly for a financial journalist, you need to understand this framework, you know, to be able to understand what's going on so in fiscal management. Then the two give you your budget deficit on a cash basis. When you take that balance, and you bring it forward. So in every time you see a framework, a Ghana budget, a Ghana fiscal framework, where the budget deficit is not equal to the fiscal balance on commitment basis, there's something wrong. But the two things are identities. You know, uh, one is cash basis, then you move it into the accrual, it's the same thing. Then you add arrears. And your arrears, one of the debates we've been having, which has landed us to where we are, where we thought we were doing good, but now we see we are not, is how do you hit exceptional revenue and expenditure? You know, so that has been one of the major debates that we have been having. And here again, I think the issue is quite simple. Uh, we should just subscribe to the GFS rules as we are members of the fund. You know, that's the technical side of the fund. Or to IFSA, so both, because they collaborate and the UN, you know, they have standards you know, for this for accrual accounting. And I think that that is one of the things, you know, we should do, possibly amend the PFMA, make sure that, you know, the accounting for these things is not a matter of discretion, so that everybody would know the basis on which we calculate fiscal deficit one and fiscal deficit two on a commitment and cash basis. When you have added this, then you have your accrued position, which should be financed, which is why we call it cash. Right. And, and so, and then, so again, your fiscal balance to put to there is what you are financing. And that should be your borrowing by our laws, our rules. So again, when you see a disconnect between the two, you are seeing something push. This is the reason why took debt tell us where we are. Because after the debate over whether government has a right to show something as deficit or not. The point is that unless you are doing off budget completely and you are not in the give me play framework completely, right? Then your exceptional item 
whether you finance, whether you show it regularly or as a, it must be finance. And once you borrow to finance, it will reflect and the controller to reflect the container. That is why it started having this, you know, an adjustment by the IMF, the Fitch, Moody's and others came in. And now we all know the reality that even the government had to concede that we were shy of 80%. You know, whereas others were saying we were at 83% or so uh, last year. So this is part of the issues regarding the framework. You would not be able to spot these things if you do not understand the fiscal framework you know, very well. So when you have the fiscal balance two, the balance two is fairly should be equal to your borrowing or total financing. Total financing is made up of borrowing and then the repayment of the debt, whole debt. The difference between the two is the debt that you are adding because it's net. So either you are repaying down and therefore it goes down as we did, you know, with a sinking fund and you saw it mimicking very well the graph. So you have in that case a positive or you have a negative, which will be added to the debt that you brought forward, right? So if we were showing the whole thing, then it's balance of the debt that you brought forward, add your borrowing, less your amortization, and that's why we say net borrowing, and that gives you your debt stock at the end of the year. So that's the things they are only, you can't show anything outside, you know, without distorting the framework. And this is the situation we are facing, and this is a debate that we must have. You know, parliament and others must have a frame um, because this, this, this uh, uh, framework I'm showing was rationalized, has been improved based on technical assistance and others since year PSAP. So if we want to change it now, but the PFME is quite clear. Because it's the controller who is head of government accounting. Controller is required under the PFME to signal to the minister and possibly to parliament, you know, because we are talking about the budget here that you want to change the basis of accounting. It's not something you can do on your own. So I think if we want to get out of the woods, we need to settle this so that we all agree what numbers we are talking about. So let me. Uh, Okay, just to make sure that uh, my screen is not being distorted. So what do we do? We want to use numbers because we don't want to dispute, you know, and where we have reservations, we'll point out. So this is a budget, or well, these are two budgets, 2021 budget, first column, and we have, we have been tracking every quarter, quarter one, quarter two, which is a mid-year review numbers, that's quarter two. Because a mid-year review, we picked that. And then quarter three, which is shown in the budget appendix. So you, if you haven't seen it, you can go and, and pick it up from there. Now, we do not have quarter four, but luckily we also have at the extreme end to the right, you got the left to the blue bar, is budget projection estimates. The right is actual. So since we know the projection to the end of the year, and we know the budget to the end of the year, we subtract the end of the year from the quarter three, right, which is shown in the budget. And therefore we say derived because we have derived it. And it tells us what government is going to do in the fourth quarter to get to the uh, provisional actual, because the provisional actual is provisional, it's no real actual, right? So let me use an example. So uh, government is going to the end of the, oh, the government budget is 2021, 72.4 as revenue. Let's use revenue to go through it. You can see I've shaded it. And then, 
it budgeted for 2022, um, 100 billion, right? That is the revenue we are expected to collect. You have expenditure being 135. The government is saying that up to the third quarter, which is in the budget, I collected 47. Now, if, and then it's saying that at the end of the year, you envisage that we'll collect 70. Okay. So if you said at the end of the year, you are going to collect 70, then if I compare your, my 70 to your 72 or my 70 to your third quarter, the difference is what you expect to collect in the fourth quarter. So this is what this table is telling us. And this table, therefore, tells us two things. One is the budget, revenue budget from 72 jumping to 100 in 2022. Right, that is the left side. Is it feasible? Is government really does government really think that it can collect nearly 30 billion, which is about 70, 72, right? Or let's say 35 or 40 percent. 72. Can it collect that much? Moreover, it's not just 72, the government is collecting a probable actual of only 70. The government is saying, I cannot even collect 72. That's the extreme end, 2021. Out of the 72, I can collect only 70. So if you collect the 47, then you have 23 to collect. If you divide the 23, is it feasible? One way of checking quickly is to take the third quarter 40, 47 divided by three, three quarters. Right, which is giving you something around 16 or so, uh, 15, 16. And now we are saying we want to collect 23 in the fourth quarter. Is it feasible? Right. And then, despite not meeting 72, now you say you want to collect 100 billion. Okay. We'll come to that. I just want you to understand. Spending, if it is this revenue, which is going to. Otherwise, we listen so that we can put on our mics when we come to questions and answers. You can do the same exercise for expenditure, increasing from 110 to 135. Right? The 110. We are saying we'll end the year at 107. We'll come to that question. Are we spending 107 because we could not finance, you know, the budget? Is that a reason it is lower? In other words, because we did not go to the budget, to the markets, are we having difficulty mobilizing domestically? That's why we are collecting 107. Or it is austerity. That is reduction. In order that we can have a lower you know, deficit, this question needs to be answered. Right? So if it is merely because you cannot collect, right, then, you know, you are practicing austerity to the end of the year. And then you look to the left, the budget expenditure has increased to 135, which for me, tells me is significant and tells me that the reason you have 107 is because you cannot pay your bills, 2021. And therefore, Putting the arrears are carrying forward, therefore, be higher. Or there's a 135 show that there are significant arrears which we want to. So I, I'm, I'm spending time on this just to tell you that this is you know, how we draw our conclusions. Because for us, we are answering the question are we going to get out of it? Right? So we are not picking one item and focusing on it, Homo tax, whatever it is. You know, but it's part of the, the revenue. So we'll come to it. But we want to show you the context. So during question time, we can come back to it. I hope that those who attended our, you know, uh, fiscal framework free workshop, you know, uh, next time we'll get a little money. Uh, so we will be doing more of this, putting it in detail, you know, later in the next year. So this is what we have in graph. This is your revenue, 
for blue is 2021 budget and your whatever color i'm colorblind is 2021 probable or provisional actual and your 2022 2022 budget and your 2021 actual then it's yeah that is uh, one is a quarter and one is, you know, um, let's see. Yeah, okay, we'll come back to this graph. So this is what we are showing, you know, uh, graphically. Uh, and it shows you your revenue, shows you your expenditure, shows you the deficit. That's big. We go through the same exercise, you know, so we just, I use that to explain, so we wouldn't spend much time here, except to, to draw your attention to the fact that, you know, the areas which we thought was the one that was, you know, heavy and was going to be financed, right? may probably not be the case. Because we budgeted arrears 3,000, 3.7 billion. We did not revise it in the supplementary budget, right? And we are saying that at the end of the year, extreme right, we are likely we are going to clear. We are likely to clear all the three point seven. And then we have a deficit, which remember we were speculating. You know, we have a bump in in expenditure. Which we were speculating maybe the reason why you have the bump because you are not able to go to the market. Yes, still you can see just for the blue line begins that. The areas in the budget is supposed to be going down. And so it's supposed to be going down. Then are we saying that this whole jump from, you know, uh, 110, or if you like, 107, 135, current expenditure, not areas. And from what we all know, you know, um, even, and let me jump a bit ahead. Why I'm raising this, this point. The government itself said in the budget that they were going to plan to clear accumulated arrears, right? Accumulated arrears over two year period. We did a senior spine in three years. Is it the 1.9 that's going to be cleared in two years? Or is it some other the pipeline? And what part of the pipeline? Are we saying that all that is certified? Right, it's 1.9, and that's why that's for six months. We have a criteria determining the arrears. So, if that is not the case, then and the arrears figures are low, as we have argued in the past, then remember our fiscal framework arrears add to the deficit or to fiscal balance to one, right? To give us fiscal balance two. And since we are living an exceptional expenditure, then we think that the rate should be higher. And if the rate is higher, then it means that the deficit is higher. And therefore, the deficit that we are seeing, you know, what is it? So uh, we can come back, you know, to this, those who may not. Let me also draw your attention to the deadline from the bottom. You saw the identity. You said that, you know, the fiscal balance, since the um, exceptional arrears are not going to You can see the 37, you know, billion, which is the arrears that we are we are talking about. Um, being brought down 31, and then the 37 being repeated. So what is happening? And this is the bailout cost. Are we saying that for 2022? You see that if you compare the rest, anywhere there's a bailout, 2.8. Right, increases from three six. Later, there's the bail out eight point seven, bail out five, five six. Right, so this. However, here, this is a decline. The only way this can decline to thirty one and jump back to thirty seven and be equal to this is that this whole thing a recovery, be positive. It means they say. Maybe government is going to say government has finished paying the will be finished paying the 
if they allow costs you know, this year and next year, you know, they will be, uh, there will be asset sales and others which will go flow back into the budget. If that's the case, then should I be already? So again, it's an area where hope that we can focus. If that is not the situation and it is a mistake, then the five should be added to the 37. And therefore, the fiscal deficit, you know, should be you know, higher. You know, not what we are seeing, you know, in the budget. And that means that the deficit should be higher. Now, another way of looking at this, we'll come to it, is that let me draw your attention. We are financing 37. That is revenue minus expenditure plus an exceptional expenditure. Esla is already part of the revenue for debt service and others. So you are looking at a situation where the 37 itself is about half of the revenue. The deficit about half of the revenue, you know, that GRE, you know, is bringing in as 70. So again, that's another way of looking this thing. When you are looking at the revenue effort, you know, which we have to make to get out of the woods. So if you are not cutting expenditure to reduce the deficit, then you must raise revenue. And can GRA bring in 35 billion more? That's a question. So again, this shows us, you know, the, the graph, you know, uh, they are pointed downwards because you can see that they make it. And you can see here, you know, that the bailout costs are in between, sometimes they are zero, you know, estimates, sometimes they pop up. So, um, so this is the financing of the deficit. Now let's point to just a couple of things here. Uh, you see the sovereign bond, the colored in yellow. Uh, there was no issuance for the one, but the two we did the issuance, which is here, and it's shown here. Sovereign bonds. Uh, same figure for the three, for the four zero. In the budget, does it mean government is not going to go to the market? For this four point eight. That's what seems because remember this is the end of year figure. So if government has ruled out going to the market, as the issue of market assets become real, and how would this be financed going into into the different? Sorry, the differences. We'll come to the difference, right? But the point here is that you can see that unlike previous years. Right, where we went, or even the current year where we projected 24. Here, we are having full for next year only 4.8, which means a very, very significant reduction on activities next year. Sorry, the actual is actually 15. We didn't even make the whole 24. So the difference is here. So we have a table where we come to where it shows the difference. So we are no longer we are not going to the market. So we are just carrying over the balance in 24 and 15, you know, and even less this is what we are going to do. And we know that when we go to the market, we go for refinancing and budget financing. So are we going to depend on the domestic markets if to do refinancing of the principal? Remember, we have issued a lot of bonds. And we do, the, we obtain interest on it. Okay, so that is bloating the interest. It doesn't mean that the only way in which we can do some amortization, if we don't do the bond, is to be faithful to the same farm. Allow the oil revenue, you know, to come in here. And then the income fund is down to zero. This is before, that's why having some balance, right? So what is going on here? There were actual activities around the sinking fund, right? And that you see that the entire thing is in, you know, uh, twenty. It's in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, are we going to tear the sinking fund? What objective, right? 
these are some of the issues parliament should be taking. Or is it, you know, the cap of the stabilization fund that was made, that was taken through agency fund and flowing as expenditure instead of debt management, you know, into the budget. So I can see, so these things that we are seeing here, they really financing the deficit. And therefore we begin to use a sinking fund without, because we have not removed a cap, you know, for, you know, uh, deficit financing instead of the debt management as originally. It's an area in which we can discuss, but we intend to, to look at the petroleum funds more critically when the uh, petroleum uh, report is issued. This time we are going to look at the fiscal, that one of the sessions we told you is the fiscal management of the petroleum revenue management. In movement, you know, since 10 years. But as well. We already know that, you know, the current administration in three years is getting more revenue from oil than the eight years. Mills. So what is happening to the own revenue? You know, to the point where we wanted to clear, clear the heritage funds to the point where you know, we, you know, we, 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 we did not restore or remove the cap that was set in 2015 and then ask for a further reduction. So are we beginning to use the petroleum revenue to finance the budget? I think this is one of the questions that, you know, we would be, we'll be examining. But, you know, this issue came up and was raised by PIAC, you know, already, um, I think two or three years back, and there was supposed to have been a rollback. You can see a lot of activity, the result of the cap, and on account of COVID, are we still, you know, because we went to the parliament. If not COVID, then the deficit, if we are saying that government is saying that it's improving, then we must go back to the rules based, you know, for the stabilization fund. Now, let me draw your attention also to the fact that. When you are reading the numbers, there has been a slight revision of the GDP at the end of the year. It wasn't the GDP in the 2021 budget. I'm talking about 2021. You know, so for revenue that may account for why you have, you know, a bit of, you know, a, because the base is lower, so it's likely to be higher as a percentage of GDP, which we shall see that. In the case of revenue, that may be the reason the ratios, you know, also have gone down. And if growth, and if this depicts that growth is really, uh, yes, as, as we know, post-COVID, globally, the term recovery, then it means that, you know, the revenue to GDP ratio, if this whole austerity is based on revenue, uh, there will be a hard time. Because I rebasing any time the GDP increases, um, the revenue to GDP ratio goes down. And here we have to more. And this, this begs the question that um, when we look at the low revenue figures, things that we have to look examine the implications of a launch, you know, the tax reform. Right. And they to do. Which must be. So this is the point we are making. Again, I'll highlight a few. We can go back, come back later on. The revenue, you see that the budget was supposed to be 16.5. Right? They go to the stream, and government is saying that they are likely to make 16. Tax revenue, you know, domestic revenue is 12.7, which is I was talking about. Government is saying it's likely to move. Yes, still, budget is saying that they are going to do 22 hits. And then we will we'll exceed or be within the sub saharan for revenue about 17. Is this feasible? We jump from 12, 18, five percentage points of GDP, you know, within a year. And if we say that, Therefore, that the highest we ever got for revenue was at least 17 point something. 
in 20, 2015, and that was it, right? We've never really hit those levels. So are these numbers really, you know, to reduce or to push GRA in particular to bring in more revenue? We see the non-tax revenue gap is, you know, it's widening. So uh, grants is virtually non-existent now. So these are some of the challenges. Uh, how are we performing compensation and interest? It was projected to be 16.1. We are saying the 2022 budget is slightly higher, right? 16.6. And then it gives a probable actual of 14.9. So the squeeze the compensation and interest is not abating because not even the government's budget shows that you know the ratios will be going down. Right. Uh, and if you look at it in terms of tax revenue, which we will be looking at total revenue, it may seem to be going down. Why? Because you know these numbers are high. We'll come to that. So I'm looking, as I said from the beginning, at the package. If you want to do you know, an austerity program, or if you want to do an adjustment program, let's just say an adjustment program, not like but austerity. If you want to do an adjustment program, then you have to look at you know, the entire picture. You don't have time to look at it. We'll do more detailed. So, so far, what are we saying? We are saying our revenue is a big cost, or seems to be a and it underestimates impact of two rebasing and post-COVID growth that will take place. Those, these do not necessarily translate into GRA effort. And therefore, it requires that GRA is given significant support, particularly the automation of domestic revenue, which we see is taking place already. On the other hand, we are likely, including GRA, to see a bump, a bump in crude oil prices, you know, and then the post-COVID recovery are likely to be positive economy. So it's not all gloom, there are some positive things. Uh, then we have, you know, the boost, which we hope we can rise further if crude oil prices remain at 80, the highest they have been since. Right. Um, then we envisage that, you know, some revenue boost come from there. Maybe that is what is making it's optimistic. We can collect twenty three percent. But remember, it's not all the oil revenue that's going to the budget. That has to go to the GMPC to stabilization funds, ABFA that will go into the budget, then to everything. So my emphasis is revenue allocation. Another positive thing is the. In doing away with the VAT factory scheme, also there's a retailer, large retailer, so necessary, also necessary. And what we are seeing there actually is going back to the provisions or the policies that were changed that went into the PAT Act 2013 and the Income Tax Act. Those policies back then, the policy behind it is that small entities below the threshold, which has been increased which is positive, to pay only one. You know, so the presumptive tax was also made equal. You know, the presumptive tax level at the point where you qualify to do only presumptive, that is one time, you know, tax payments calculated by GRA has been made equal. But so that when you pay, you are paying in view of both VAT and presumptive income tax. That was a policy and it's being brought back. It makes it quite easy. Small entities, but it takes out the large retailers and the wholesalers who can keep proper records. That was the last one making that change, which was reversed in 2017 and coming back. So that is positive. Um, the overall, we think that the policies are a bit ad hoc, collective. They continue to distort, you know, the tax structure. We were a bit disappointed that the straight levies. We're not revised to uh, make business collect their, sorry, reclaim their input VAT, you know, uh, on that they pay 
purchases and expenses. Uh, this is a, a drain on business. Okay, so that is the a few points on expenditure. We have spoken about this already, just a summary. Um, the whole thing is predicated on a boost to revenue. We don't see much by way of, you know, salary, sorry, um, expenditure rationalization or reduction as we saw with some of it. Even the uh, capital expenditure is receiving a boost, a major boost. And then because we make a point here, we'll come back to it. Because the IMS 1 billion or part of it was not shown as exceptional revenue, it was shown as financing. The hazard against that increase in capital expenditure may be partly financed from the SDR. Remember what is being financed is a deficit. So we are not using the SDR necessarily for debt because it is accounting, accounted for already, you know, in the financing. So maybe if it is targeted towards the capital expenditure, then it should be solid capital expenditure because this is accumulation of our production at the IMF over the year. Parliament should be very prudent how, you know, going it. So, we know this story already, the memorandum, you know, and what we pointed out here, 8.4. Uh, so see the 8.4 in deep yellow, changing to 7.3 and then back to 8.4. We think that either this is an error or it shows that, I think there was some statement, I said a, a paragraph that shows some improvement in the bailout and likely you know, uh, probably I would accrue to government, but whether this will end up in total positive, something that will be monitored since we do this on a court. This is the financing. And you can see the IMF SVR, which I've pointed out, uh, exceptional financing here. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, those of us, we discuss it on my Twitter handle. Those of us, those of you who do follow, so this is a graphical representation of that. And in fact, when we look at the numbers, when we look at the numbers, here, this is where it shows. So the IMF, 4.5 billion. And if you take an exchange rate of six, you know, it falls short of six billion. So the question is whether BOD, you know, is getting the rest, simply by way of budget, sorry, by way of balance of payment support, which is what countries do for the entire amount, right? Nothing goes into the budget, which is what we did. So this is a, and we are seeing here BOG going into the end of the year, significant financing, which has been included. So is the difference being channeled here, or is VAG continuing to support the budget? These are questions we we have not reviewed the financing part of the budget in detail, you know. But when we do our follow up, answer some of these questions. We are flagging it, you know, for all of you to just keep an eye on. So we move on. Uh, so areas we've spoken about them already. Meeting exceptional items in a non-conventional way seems to have added the SDR because the SDR came in. As cash. Remember, the SDR is coming in at cash. So, how did controller receive the money? You know, and in Gitmis, are they, or how did GRE, which receives our money, you know, uh, because it's not tax revenue. So, if it is non tax revenue, how did the Ministry of Finance, as the agency for non tax revenue, receiving the money? They notify the controller to record it as revenue inflows. Which is what the gift miss requires. That's why it should be exceptional. In that case, revenue would have been increased, but then it would have been shown as spending. So 2021, you know, provisional should have shown the inflow of the money. And then when Parliament is used, you know, if it's for financing. So we didn't see any recording because you can see that, you know, it's, everything is zero the probable actual, you know, for the IMF 
2021. So there's a serious accounting issue there. And then it went straight into financing. So we need an interpretation you know, you know, of that. Very important. We also see a bit of look at the 2021 budget. You will see DOG, and it says, of which if, remember the gift board upgraded recently, is it the source of financing? Because remember, if was the sources of revenue for gift uh, was the VAT increase of two and a half percent and 15 percent or so, two or 25 percent, ABFE for commercial projects. And then any other, then the 2014 bond, 15 million US dollars back in 2014 was paid in as capital. Now we have seen that the gift act has been repealed because it was these sources of revenue, the VAT and the petrol revenue, you know, were repealed in 2017. You see that the petrol revenue has been repealed, which means that the gift gets you know, some money from petroleum revenue, but the VAT has not been repealed. The VAT element continues to go in. But it's curious, if it is oil, then why is it put under DOG? You know, but then in the actual, it doesn't show. And as we show up, up there, there's a financing by DOG. So this 1.4, maybe this probable actual of 1.2 from DOG is, is 1.4, you know, to a lesser extent. Again, we will need clarification some of these things and Parliament has, you know, placed these things to be. So deficits, again, as I said, we know the story. Uh, so we've discussed the financing. We've discussed the IMF, SDR issue, Bank of Ghana financing, um, the discrepancy, at 1.70 percent uh, between the fiscal balance cash, fiscal balance commitment. Does it increase the deficit? You know, and then our final thought here is: Is it time, for Parliament, to look at it? Or is who's this? And see the basis of the calculation of the cap, and then it must be removed. If the, we are told the economy is healthy and the deficit is strong, it means that government is meeting the deficit. Like, but uh, we know to that the difference, the deficit is huge, even by government standards. The 5%, you know, is a seeded even if you take 11% or 9%. You know, so um, was that the intention? You know, or the rules were put in place? And it cannot be depleted, you know, because you know we can exploit the stabilization fund to finance the budget and not put in sufficient effort to raise revenue as a government. Right. So these are thoughts, considering that just truly put in the first cap, which we channeled into the thinking fund, pay off debt, the main use of the thinking fund. Up to 2016 and 2017, 200 million from that fund was to pay off 550 of the 750 of the first of them bond, which was issued under His Excellency J. Kufu. So the sinking fund and contingency fund, the way they are being used now, I think on this 10th anniversary, they need to be a register, you know, to tighten the rules of PRM. This is just, we we'll rush through this because we, we know it already. We are expressing us as a percentage of total revenue, but as a percentage, sorry, as a percentage of GDP, but as a percentage of total revenue. And you can see the point I've been making here, that even the budget, the quarterly performance came close to 100. But then you see quarter one, we exceeded one to one, quarter two, 104 cumulative, and then Q3, remember that is what's in the budget now, it's supposed to go down to 95.1. So, and then therefore to achieve this 93.2, you need to do 89.2 in the third quarter. Is this feasible? Um, so these are 
against some of the questions. So uh, when this is distributed, you can you know, look at the numbers you know, yourself. It's the same table, but express the percentage of total revenue. And uh, I made a point earlier about the revenue effort that is needed, you know, even to, to, to sell the, you can see it's stark reality here. The deficit reaches this first level in the budget required 67.3%, right? Uh, no, it's here, 8.5. I will change this, this figures. Then there's an error here. But if we take the budget, it's supposed to go down from 74 to 46. That the deficit that will be closed. Right? Um, so we would, 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 would amend this between and then uh, you know, I think there was a glitch somewhere. Right? I recall putting down some uh, space. So what is it that we are, we are getting to the end? So all that we have been saying, what is the gist of it? We are saying, if we want to know whether we have a program to get out of the woods, then remember we have the proper budget. This is the probable, that's 2021 budget. 2021 probable actual. And this is, this is the budget for 2022. To what extent does this budget for 2022 is higher or lower than budget for And if the probable actual is lower in case of revenue, then we'll be comparing effort that is needed as the difference between this and this to determine whether that is between the budget for 2022 and the probable actual for 2021 in order that and know that we can achieve the objectives of the budget. We are saying you will need a 38.7 you know, gap billion additional to be able to achieve if you are basing it on the budget for 2021 or 30 billion if you are basing it on the budget on the probable you know, actual. So we do this also run through. So this gives you clearly a revenue expenditure effort that will be required if you were doing a program. But if you were doing a program and negotiating, uh, ladies and gentlemen, these are the sort of things that you go through with the IMF, right? Or we, we went through in designing our homegrown policy and coming up you know, with the, some of the revenue measures that we had in the 2023 to 2024, which is uh, described as a nuisance, you know, taxes. And I only, you know, that the most nuisance of all taxes is motor. So, um, so we, these are basically, as I'm saying, line by line, questioning of whether you are doing austerity or, you know, what is your current effort? And those of you who have participated in our scorecard, you see that for us to get clarity on where we are, we went back 2013 because that's a year of rebasing, the current rebasing. So we've been examining this crucially, right? So these are some of the questions. Um, Tesla, 3.2 billion to come in. And that seems to be significant when you look at the revenue effort. I remember all of this likely to go Settle the Tesla box. We've changed the cash flow you know, to bonds. So it may not be available, readily available. It may just be paper, you know, showing it's there. You know, so that is one point. And it begs the question if we can take the expenditure into fixed note, why not the revenue? It's showing the revenue, you know, as boosting revenue. Actual. We do the same for expenditure. We discuss already. We ask ourselves. You know, this 7.3 reduction, what does it signify? Retrenchment, you know, or what? Um, or does it explain, you know, the entrepreneurial program for NAPCO and the transitioning from the NAPCO uh, payroll policy 
to something else so that you can minimize the impact of Ladies and gentlemen, uh, some of these answers are in the question. Some of them are nuanced, you know, so we put question marks sometimes because we are not too clear, you know, what the policy is. Uh, we have interest and uh, compensation. We need to explain the contraction, right? Because it's supposed to be an improvement. You know, this is the positive for expenditure is an improvement. You know, so what are we saying? For example, that 4.4 percent difference. It mean the sinking fund or something is going to be used to reduce the debt levels such that you know the interest payment will go down and has some respite. You know or what? Otherwise, then this contraction here may not be realistic, and therefore we need to look at the deficits in more realistic ways. You know and maybe tend to agree. You know with the ratings agencies, the IMF and the rest, that we may not be completely out of the woods. That the best we could do probably would be to repeat last year's deficit. Okay. Uh, so we do this again through, and then here we are looking at its implications using the budget. What are its implications for the deficit, for fiscal balance, for the rest? So we go through it with a two curve at this at this point. So let's pick one. If the fiscal balance, the budget deficit, excluding bailout costs, is higher, then is it a recovery? We ask this question. And then why, you know, as okay. Um That is, if why is the Eslab bond going to be in existence, and why is the petrol revenue? Revenue uh, from sorry the, the sorry the revenues from Esla yes petroleum based from Esla. If we are expecting a recovery, the time take off the Esla levies to consistency of policy. Why do you need the money? So or are we servicing? Does it mean that the mortgage Esla like get fund? Therefore, we have to use. That's to stay in place, something that was supposed to last five years. That's to stay in place. The latest one was 2035, right? So we are bedding with ESLA, you know, even though banking sector and other crises. Oh, does it include energy? The sustainability, we hold our position that we may end up with the debt between maybe 80, 83. Some say unity fight, but we are waiting for the debt management report, you know, so we can do an analysis. We got that similar. So we don't want to be speculating. We like to have my figures. Um, similarly, the medium term, just as we did the absence of policy and external program, uh, we use it to substitute for homegrown. So if government comes out with more details on homegrown, we shall use it. Otherwise, we use the medium term. Do the similar analysis. But you remember that when we did the 2021 million term using the, the budget numbers for 2022, the year in which we are 23 and 22, we said that we didn't see a path addition. So far, we still hold on. So we need a package. We have always said that in this budget convincing says, unless parliament is going to be giving a package which will be made public as part of the discussion. So we wait to see. Uh, of course, the revenue seems ambitious. We need a program to tell us how GRA is going to keep those targets. You know, how the contraction in some of the numbers on the expenditure side also going to be, you know, explained. And how the uh, items like uh, SDR and others in in the financing and others, how do they translate as revenue? How did they come in? How was it recorded? What portion goes to Bank of Ghana? What portion comes to budget? We need all this. We hope that the finance committee will go into it. 